steal my three air bike conditioning methods that will build your work capacity and allow you to get better gains from your training. What's up everyone, Jason Brown here, the king of programming. Today we're talking about conditioning on the air bike. I love to hate the air bike. This thing is an awesome piece of equipment. If you're thinking about investing in a piece of cardio equipment, this is probably be my first choice because not only is it incredibly versatile, but for most people, it's more cost-effective than getting something like a treadmill. So with that said, we have a lot of things that we can accomplish on this air bike. And if we're just thinking about singular methods to develop our aerobic system, as well as anaerobic systems, we can get it done on this piece. So we're gonna go through three methods that you can include in your programming that all have specific goals. Now, with training energy systems, we have to make sure that a few things happen. Number one, we gotta make sure that the duration of work and rest interval are in alignment with the goal for that system. Meaning, if you are working on maximal effort, power output of something like the Fostergen system, we're gonna need short bouts of work with long bouts of rest, just kind of more generally speaking. I'm gonna drop more information in the description so you can see how the programming actually breaks down for all three of these methods. But these are important pieces because I often see that people try to program these methods and they miss the boat on one end. Maybe they program the work interval too long and the rest interval too short or something of that nature. But you wanna make sure that you get those things on point to really arrive at the adaptations we're looking for of each of these methods. So with that said, the first method is ATP PC power work. This is power production of the Fostergen system. The Fostergen system, this is our highest power system, but also highest fatigue ability. So when you think about this, we're gonna be working for seven to 10 second duration. So our sets will be very short. And when you do these, you're gonna feel like, oh, is this actually doing anything? It is if you're going with maximal effort on this bike. Okay, so maximal effort for seven to 10 seconds, then we're gonna rest for two minutes. And we're gonna do that across seven to 10 sets. That is method number one. This is a great method that is really not a, a perfect method for everyone, but it's great for people that are trying to work on something like having short bouts of work, really high explosive bouts of work with um, maybe longer bouts of rest. So someone I think of that comes to mind for this is an MMA fighter, someone that's doing a takedown and needs to be very explosive for a short bout of time, this is a good method to tap into that so you can actually pr improve the specificity of something like a takedown in MMA. Now, another uh, example of someone that might need more power of this system would be a football player where football by nature is four to seven second plays followed by 45 seconds of rest, which adds another element when we think about that rest interval because it's not complete in terms of, of the recovery of that system. But this is a method that can really help have some uh, impact on someone's ability to have power and be explosive for short bouts of work. So great method to use. Again, make sure to check out the notes in the description. There's some more information there for you. If you're like me and love optimizing your health and performance, love cookies and tacos, subscribe to my once weekly newsletter, EWOD. There's zero pressure, zero spamming to join and a lot of value to gain. And as a special thank you, I'll send you a discount code to any of my training subscriptions. The link is in the description. See you on the inside. Okay guys, our next method, glycolytic capacity. This is our second anaerobic system. This allows us to improve the capacity of that system. So when we think about capacity versus power, we're thinking about complete rest versus incomplete rest. So two very different things. And in particular, this system is going to be incredibly painful because we're gonna do longer bouts of work. So good example for glycolytic capacity work is five sets of 60 seconds, max effort, followed by two to three minutes of rest. So know that the rest interval is not complete in this case because we're working capacity of this system. And as I said, be prepared to go through some serious pain with this type of training. It is longer duration. It's gonna be incredibly painful. It's going to really increase acidity of skeletal muscles, specifically in the quadriceps. So you are gonna be feeling the burn caveat. Burn does not come from lactic acid like many people say it does, but that's another story for another day. 
This is a great method to improve capacity of the glycolytic system um, and can be done very effective on the air bike. All right, our third and final method is for the aerobic system. You're probably not shocked to hear that, but we're hitting all three systems on the air bike today. This is called tempo intervals. Now, when you look at this on paper, you're probably gonna think, is that an anaerobic method? It's only 15 seconds of work followed by 45 seconds of rest. But here's the key thing. We're doing it for multiple sets. So 10 to 20 sets of 15 seconds hard followed by 45 seconds of active recovery. So there's no full recovery built into this. We're gonna be on the bike the whole time. And the goal is to keep that work interval not maximal, but a kind of more of a hard effort. So like an RPE of eight, followed by 45 seconds of easy pedaling, okay? So um, overall, it's going to tap into more uh, of the aerobic system, more aerobic metabolism, but it's gonna allow us to do some higher level intervals across a longer duration. So this is a great method to change it up. If you're someone that just does steady state cardio, this is a good one to use as a progression to steady state cardio where we can do a fair amount of work in a shorter period of time, but know that the goal isn't to go maximal output like our first two methods. We wanna have a hard effort followed by an easy effort, and it should be something that's repeatable that you can do for 10, 15, 20 sets and not have a massive drop off in output. All right, guys, that is it for today. We talked about two incredible methods to improve the anaerobic systems. And we also talked about one method to improve the aerobic system. Again, one of the best pieces of equipment to get those methods executed correctly on is the air bike. One additional thing to note about the air bike, why it's so successful with working methods like this is that it allows us to really work for defined periods of time. It doesn't require a lot of skill to do. You just need to be able to get on this thing and pedal really hard, or conversely, you might need to pedal really easy depending on what you're going after. Um, but needless to say, this is a great piece of equipment to execute those methods, to ensure someone's gonna get what we want them to get from those methods and have it play out in the right way. So that's it for today, guys. If you have questions about conditioning, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys have. And remember, results are king. If you're an experienced everyday athlete, and you're looking for the best training on planet Earth, check out my three training subscriptions. A seven day free trial link is in the description. program available on the internet today. I think it's very difficult to find a trainer like Jason. That Since joining Everyday Heroes, I feel like I've stopped working out and actually started training.